Welcome back to the conclusion to my re-response to this guy. When we left off, he was in the middle of telling us how it's probably not worth our time to ever have any sort of intelligent discussion with him because he's just going to intentionally treat us like trash, because he's assigned to us a belief that we're worthless and therefore we should be treated as such. So let's jump back into that and then see where it goes. You need to consider yourself to have value. If you're going to say you have value, I'm going to ask where are you getting those values from? Why? You're just not going to understand what I say. You're just going to deliberately ignore it and make up something else. It seems plenty sufficient that I say, yeah, I have value. My opinion about what that means, where that comes from, is not really any of your concern. But you know, it's cool. If you want to be disrespectful, I mean, that's that's fun, man. That's the internet. You know, it's not about me. I'm just saying, if you don't want to look like an asshole in public, maybe change strategy. You have to be logical. Well, why should I treat you with value? Where did you get those values from? Oh, I think all people should. No, 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 no. Where did you get your values and why should I treat you with value? I know it's a long way into the video for this, but do you know there's a distinction between values and value? Oh, because human beings have values. But how? Why do they have values? Because the guy with the most power said so. That's God. Why is a cockroach less valuable than a human being? Why is a cockroach less valuable to a human being than a human being? Is your question. Are you incapable of answering this yourself? How intellectually hobbled are you? If we came from the same single point of an explosion not created, not designed, why are human beings more valuable than a cockroach? Why can't I treat you like a cockroach? You see what I mean though about how you're repetitive? Like, get your point out and be done with it. But yeah, uh, you can treat me however you want. I'm not the boss of you. Just mind the consequences. You know, I, it just, it makes, it's illogical, it makes no sense to me, it's completely unreasonable. Yes, I know what you think about it. How many times do you have to say the same thing? And logic, I'm gonna treat you the same way, man. Go nuts. Just to be clear on this, do you think I'm concerned about your opinion of me? About how you treat me? You. You. Really. When I give you advice about this, I'm just trying to give you advice for your own good. Nothing to do with me. You act like as big of a prick on the internet as you like. You're never going to be as big of a prick as a lot of the people I've interacted with. I've been an internet person since I was 10 years old. There's nothing new under the sun. I'm going to tell you first that you are made in the image of God. But if you don't believe that, and you believe that you came from a single point, then I'm going to treat you like a clump of cells. Right, if you don't believe in my religion, I'm going to treat you like shit. Typical Christian approach. And you wonder why people don't have a lot of respect for it. You wonder why people say mean things to you in the comments. And you have the audacity to whine about it. And to turn your comments section off, you absolute coward. I'ma treat you like a big blob. I am a big blob. I'm working on it. Not like that hard, but you know. <laughs> I'ma treat you like a clump of cells reacting to your brain wiring. And then I'm gonna question you, why should you believe your own brain wiring? I feel like we're on a merry-go-round here. I've seen that corndog stand before. Why should you believe your position if it was nothing but a process of evolution? Why should I believe that? Why should you not? You haven't even said that, you've just kind of scoffed, and you keep using this phrase nothing but to denigrate it, but you don't actually give any reasons for anything. Who said? Who said what? That my brain works perfectly? Nobody who's not a complete dunce thinks the human brain works perfectly. I don't care if your god told you it does. If that's the case, your god either doesn't exist or he lies. Reality disagrees. Why should what anybody says take primacy over reality itself? Such an asinine way of approaching the world. Like a child looking to daddy for answers, and accepting them regardless of what's right in front of their eyes. Do you have a relationship with evolution? Do you like talk to evolution? Hey, evolution. Um, am I, are you bringing me and guiding me in the right direction? Is that what this is about? Are those the criteria? The only way you can develop an opinion is by having a relationship with something and then talking to it and asking it for guidance. And then you form your opinion based on what the thing told you. And anything other than that is completely illogical and stupid, as if that's not illogical and stupid in and of itself. You know, sometimes I consider stopping this video, but then you keep throwing stuff like this at me and dragging me right back in. Questions where I can't even comprehend the level of stupidity needed to ask them while other people are being led in the wrong direction do you have conversations with evolution for you to really 
think that you're absolutely right. I don't care if I had a conversation with God himself. A conversation with someone will not convince me I'm absolutely right. That is not a way to learn information. Not definitively, anyway. I'm capable of delusion. God can lie. There's any number of reasons to not be absolutely certain of what someone else tells you. Why is this your standard for truth? This is amazing. Why didn't you tell me this earlier? Oh my God, what a disaster of thought. Now you may, may be asking me, oh, but you're, you know, you're a process of evolution too, so how are you objectively right? I don't know, do you believe in evolution? I kind of got the impression you're some kind of young earth creationist type. You seem to reject all of science. You seem to completely deny rational thought from the ground up. The only thought you appear to accept as remotely valid is thoughts that lead people to agree with you. Which I assume applies outside of the religious realm in your life as well. It probably applies to everything. How am I objectively right? Well, you got to think about this for a second. If evolution led me to believe in a god, wouldn't you think that evolution has something to do with the idea of a god? Well, yeah, which is why there's plenty of evolutionary psychology on the topic of theism and religion. Like, yeah. I would say there's almost certainly some degree of biological input into the misperceptions that lead people to believe in gods. But that's kind of a fundamental sort of base layer. I think more important is the cultural evolution built on top of it. But yeah, why would I not think that? That doesn't make it true. It makes it evolutionarily useful. Why would evolution have... Why would evolution wire somebody's brain to think of a god? I don't think it does really. I think it does multiple things that are related, but I don't think it does directly that. I think it wires you to perceive presence. I think it wires you to be very attentive to human action or the actions of thinking things, including also predators and so on. And I think this leads us to look for intentional action in the world around us, not just in our fellow animals. I think that you're wired to look for causation and to try to draw causal links, even if they're pretty tenuous. I think that you're wired for curiosity, for wanting to understand how stuff works, or at least to feel like you do. I think that you're wired for group cohesion, to believe things other members of the group believe, without really questioning it. Uh, what else? Well, at least that covers the basics. Does that answer your question? Did you want an answer to your question, or were you just asking it because you thought it was a gotcha? Unless evolution is trying to reveal to us that there is a god, or God himself guided the process of evolution and has gifted certain people with the wiring and, and the capacity to understand and know who he is. So basically the assertion is that it's not possible for a belief to be evolutionarily useful and also false, right? To put it more generally, that's the claim. And all I really have to say is why? Do you have any reason to say that or do you just say it because it's convenient? Why is God even brought up? Why does God even exist? Why is God an idea? Why is anything an idea? Does any idea people have become true because it's an idea? Does the mere existence of some fantastical thought conjure the thing into existence? Is any wild imagining anybody has necessarily based on something real? Is imagination land a real place? There really is a man bear pig. Why? It makes no sense. If God doesn't exist, why does he even exist in our brain? Why is he wired to our brain for us to image him and imagine him? He's not. It's an idea that's a product of a lot of cultural evolution. But the basic thing, looking for agency, looking for some sort of intentional causation, these things that are useful to us in the real world, can lead us kind of in that direction. Sure. That doesn't mean people innately have the idea of the Christian God in their head. That's not true. People who aren't raised in your religion don't believe in your God. At least not until they get told about your religion and then for whatever reason become convinced. But no, young children raised in an atheistic household don't just suddenly start believing in a god they've never heard of. Doesn't work like that. Case in point, me. Oh, because people freely want to imagine a god? That's, that's folly. That's very folly. Yeah, people making stuff up that never happens. That's very, very folly. Very fallish, you might even say. Fallish? Very follicle. Ah! You don't know what evolution is. But how do you know what evolution is? Is this related to the previous point somehow? What do you mean, how do I know what evolution is? It's a theory people have made up over time. I know it because I understand the theory. I bet you anything you're gonna come back and say, Aha! I knew it! You said evolution's made up! And show just how scientifically illiterate you are. Please do. How, how can you believe 
your thoughts on what evolution is if you're nothing but a product of evolution. Through the scientific method that's meant to account for it and relate it to reality? What do you mean? Scientists aren't just making stuff up and insisting that it's right, absent any confirmation. It's not some argument from authority, it's argument from reality. If you want some authority who dictates truth to you, well there it is, reality itself. If it doesn't match reality, it gets thrown out. Doesn't matter how much reasoning you put in, doesn't matter what your brain thought should be true, doesn't matter how confident you felt, if it's wrong, it's wrong. Out it goes. That's science. And the whole reason for that is, for one thing, people lack a lot of information, so you have to be able to adapt as new information comes in, but also, people's thoughts and reasoning are imperfect. And you have to be able to compensate for that too. People have to be able to argue with each other. It has to be a constant process of looking for flaws and pointing them out and dealing with them, removing them. All the time using reality itself as the absolute source of truth. This helps to remove problems associated with evolutionarily driven fallacious thinking, ego, bias, feeling-based thinking, intuition. That's the point. The entire reason for the method is based on an understanding of the fallibility of humans. Religion has none of this. You have imperfect minds that you're operating with zero concern for the truth, only a concern with what feels good to you, with no checks or balances anywhere, except maybe the Bible as some sort of a thing to check your ideas against so they stay somewhat in line with each other. But that again is just a book written by fallible people. Maybe they felt they were inspired by the Holy Spirit, some of them. But that's a feeling. A feeling of fallible human beings. Yes, science is fallible. People are fallible. But at least there's an attempt made by people who employ the scientific method. You don't even bother with that. So don't come at me acting like I'm the one being unreasonable here. You won't even acknowledge your mind's fallibility. You won't even acknowledge that the idea of God could be made up. So give me a break. How can you defend evolution if you're nothing but a clump of cells who, who defines evolution? Did, did evolution tell you what evolution is? Or, or are you just going based off of human research? Well, human research is the process of humans looking to reality to let reality tell them what reality is. So kind of both. The ultimate source of truth in science is not a book or a person or a feeling like it is with you. It's reality. It's what's actually there. Now, I'm into the second half of his video here. The first half led to about two hours worth of response. So as you can tell, I've been trying to be concise and speedy about it. But from this point on, I mean, up to this point, he's already been repeating himself a lot. From this point on, there's a lot more repetition of stuff I've already been over ad nauseum. Almost literally, at times. So from this point on, I'm going to try to get through this a little bit faster. Skip the stuff that's just another repetition of something I've already touched on, or very like it. So let's fast forward a bit. People who are uh, uh, progressed by evolution, who are created by evolution. Again, I can't take you serious. I can't take somebody who doesn't value themselves serious. You're nothing but a couple cells, so why should I believe you? I'm going to ask you. Forget about all your little arguments. No. I'm going to ask you a real question. Why should I believe you? If you're, not, if you're no different from a cockroach, why should I believe you? The entire premise of the question is ridiculous, and also you're a moron, as I explained before until my head almost exploded. This is something I already touched on, which I said I was going to skip, but I'm leaving it because of the next thing he says, which is... Nobody can answer that. They're, you know what? They're going to... I promise you they're going to ignore that question. Every single person watching this right now, they will not answer that question. There, so I figured I wouldn't fast forward that part because that'd be me ignoring the question even though I've answered it multiple times. Or rather, torn apart the premises of it multiple times and shown why it's a completely malformed question akin to when did you stop beating your wife? The question itself is based on false assumptions. It can't be answered without questioning the question. Ask an honest question that is not built on your bullshit and I'd be happy to give you an answer that doesn't involve just picking at the question. Anyway, fast forward. <laughs> If you shouldn't take me serious, then get off my channel. Get off my channel. You don't need to be here. I'm not on your channel. I guess this is a live stream. Maybe you're talking to the chat. Weird to do in a response to me, talking to the camera as if you're talking to me, but you're actually not talking to me. That's really weird. But you know what? You guys may be hurt. You guys may be, you know, in pain. You guys might have gone through something. You know, may maybe... Maybe you were hurt by the church. Maybe you were hurt by somebody else. Oh, sweet summer child, who hurt you? Please, barf. But I want to tell you, you guys do have value. Every single one of you have value. Yeah, we agree. It's just you say we shouldn't be treated like it. And we should think we don't have it. 
Doesn't really matter what you think we should think, doesn't really matter if you understand our reasons, either. The fact that your brain doesn't even function sufficiently to understand what people are telling you does not mean that whatever you make up is therefore true. And it certainly does not mean you should start treating people like garbage based on your fantasies. You're stealing from God to argue against him. You're using logic. Logic is an immaterial source that comes from an an immaterial value that comes from an immaterial source. Logic is a tool of thought developed by ancient people, primarily the ancient Greeks. It's a system of thought people made up, and it continues to be used, just like the scientific method continues to be used, because it gives good results when the results are compared against reality. You know, that thing you don't care about. So you're using logic that comes from God in order, order to argue against them. I'm using logic that comes from Socrates. You don't even know what logic is or where it comes from, and you're gonna try to claim it for yourself. You're ridiculous, you're a clown. You're using love that comes from God in order to argue against him. Really, because the only people I've ever seen express anything about love are humans. Everything I see around me in the world points to the idea that humans are the origin of love and define it. Another thing you want to reduce to rubble unless it can serve your religion, right? Another thing you want to take away from people, take away from the real world, and tie on to the fantasy, and pretend like that's the only valid place for it. Make me sick. The fact that you're even willing to tear that down to serve the ideology. You're using reason, you're using mind, you're using thoughts, you're using opinions. Yeah, I'm using the human brain, correct. Which I think might be made of cells. Oh no, there's cells in my head. Ew, ick. To, or to argue against God. Yeah, because God is a dumbass human fantasy, which does not show any concordance with reality. And when I use tools that show a very good track record of the results lining up to reality, your God ends up looking all too much like a human fantasy, and the evidence is as vapor. Isn't it amazing how your ultra-powerful God can be utterly destroyed by basic reasoning? By humans not acting on pure, base, animalistic emotion, but instead actually using their heads. Which is kind of interesting that the only real way to maintain belief in the religion is to abandon your supposedly God-given intellect. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All you guys can do is complain. You guys are unreasonable. You complain and you cannot defend your position. You can't justify your position without using God and using values from God in order to try to argue against him. You're using the tools of the human mind, and I say those come from God, and so therefore you using them proves God. Well, no, that assumes the existence of God before we've even started the conversation. That's begging the question. No, sorry, denied. For the first step, you'd have to prove there's a God. For the second step, you'd have to prove that the human mind is somehow the product of that God. And then we can talk. You don't just get stuff for free. If God doesn't exist, atheist, atheism doesn't matter. These channels don't matter. Our lives don't matter. Your life is a tragedy. Yours, because you think so little of it, you try so hard to reduce it to nothing, you think it only matters in relation to your belief system. I do feel a bit sorry for you, but um, also you're a prick, so I don't really care. Nobody has values. Nobody has reason, no purpose, no goal. That's a miserable life. Yes, it would be, and that's for some reason the life you want us to have. But it's not the life we have. It's not the life you would have if you cease to believe, either. For some reason you're desperate to cling to this idea that that is what it would be, but it's not. I don't know what you find so appealing about such a hopeless world. I don't know why your religion insists on preaching such hopelessness and misery. But it does. That is why atheists are unhappy. Intuitively they are unhappy. They are never going to be satisfied. I promise you, you're never going to be satisfied if you, if you are apart from God. You will never be satisfied apart from God, ever. You think all my arguments are awesome. You're scared of my arguments. You know I'm right. You're not satisfied. You're this. You're that. You're not this. You're not that. Does the mind reading never end? Do you think this is actually compelling to an atheist? A person who you're telling what's in their head when they know it perfectly well? You're making an utter fool of yourself. If you were wise, you would have stopped 30 minutes ago, which probably would include a few minutes before you started the live stream, which would have given you time to make yourself a sandwich. I think that would have done you some good. Anyway, fast forward. Just to suffer. That's it. You were here just to suffer. <laughs> For no reason. Is that how you see your life on Earth? Just pure suffering? That's what you see your life being? All the time. Everything you do. Pure suffering. When you're with your fiancé, you're just suffering. Is that what you tell her? How romantic.
And just to be clear, you think the abject negativity of your religion towards life doesn't have anything to do with why you feel this way? You think you would still feel this way if you realized that this was all a bunch of lies and garbage coming from the religion, not from real life? That the entire point of the thing is to make you feel awful about the here and now so that you pull harder towards the carrot, which is heaven? Again, I really think your mind is stuck inside a box here. I really think you're not capable of looking outside, or not willing to. Look at your actual life day to day. Is it as bad as you pretend it is? I don't think so. Neither is mine. It's fine. Sometimes I get annoyed about something, sometimes something bad happens and I'm upset about it for a little while, and then it goes back to normal. Life goes on, man. I know yours does just the same way mine does. And maybe you're in an uncertain life situation. I mean, you're young, you're engaged, you're not very advanced into your life right now. I've been in the same boat, you know, it was a stressful time back when I was in the same position. Maybe that's the problem, but I think it's also the religion compounding it. But try to set aside whatever's making you think about it in this incredibly negative way, that life is pure, undiluted suffering. You look well enough off, you have a haircut, you got decent clothes, you're in some kind of a home, you got a smartphone, you got the luxury of time to sit around and make videos like this, you're engaged, you're presumably a citizen of one of the richest countries on the planet, already you're far above a lot of the world's population. If you're suffering with depression, it's largely perception. If you work on changing that, maybe that'll help. That is completely demonic. But people insisting that life is pure suffering, that you should see it as nothing but suffering and misery and valuelessness and hopelessness is demonic? Well, then why are you doing it? The devil has lied to you guys. If there is a devil, which I doubt, but let's grant it for a second, why would I be convinced that he's not speaking through you right now? You're desperately trying to get me to believe all of these demonic things about my life. You're trying to make me see the world in a way that I don't, which you say is demonic. Are you some kind of secret Satanist? Maybe that's the answer to what I asked way back when I asked what the game is, what your actual plan is, what benefit you get. Maybe that's it. I mean, why else would you be sitting there promoting ideas that you yourself say are demonic and satanic? And you guys, you guys believe the devil. You guys have listened to the devil. The devil told you guys, you guys are nothing but a clump of cells in this meaningless universe. The devil has told you guys you have no value. The devil has told you that, that, um that God has abandoned you. No, you're telling me that. You're telling me over and over that I should, that I must, that I do believe, even though I say I don't, even though I know I don't, that I'm nothing but a clump of cells in a meaningless universe, that I have no value, and also that God has abandoned me to be cast into the pit of hell for not believing in him, which is kind of odd come to think of it, because you say that the devil promotes atheism but also tells me God exists and God has abandoned me and apparently I believe him when he says both of these things. I'm a theist atheist. <laughs> not sure how that works, but whatever. <laughs> Point is, these are not things the devil is telling me. They're things you're telling me insisting to me over and over and over and over again unendingly i feel like i'm stuck in some kind of purgatory listening to it so why are you playing the devil the devil doesn't care about you he does not love you he wants to bring you down right well you've told us through this whole video you want us to feel worthless you want us to feel like we don't love other people you want to treat us like garbage you think we deserve that plus infinite torture on top of it you've told us all this stuff that's clearly designed just to bring us down you know you're trying to convince us to believe things that devalue us that tear people apart from each other that stop their natural inclination to care about and value each other it's not the devil it's you just you how can you not notice? Whatever, enough of the devil stuff, let's fast forward. I've looked into atheism far enough. Yes, I have. I've looked into atheism very, very far. Yeah, it says you, but we can tell you haven't. You have to show some sign of actually having done so for me to believe that, and I don't. I don't think Christianity is silly because Christianity is not silly. It's based off of the historical facts of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If Jesus rose from the dead... Yeah, right. If, 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 if. Of course, what that would prove is that somebody was capable of rising from the dead. We'd still have to figure out how. Game over. Christianity is true. God exists. No, I mean, to get the obvious thing out of the way, it didn't happen. No more than any paranormal woo garbage about, you know, in World War I, the English were hopelessly cornered by the Germans, and then the ghost angel archers showed up on white horses and defeated the Germans, and all the Germans were dead, but none of them had visible wounds. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. 
it's a bunch of crap that a bunch of people wrote stories about and they said they had amazing evidence and eyewitnesses and documented history and photographs and whatever and none of it materialized. None. Because these stories are inventions. Okay, sometimes they're hallucinations and sometimes they're enormous misunderstandings, but usually they're just outright inventions. I have read hundreds of these. Just like Jesus Rising from the Dead. The only difference is that Jesus Rising from the Dead story is especially popular. Literally the only difference. Now, now with that being said, if there was strong evidence of this story of this guy coming back to life after three days, there would be an awful lot of follow-up questions. It would not just be instantly, oh, therefore God exists. That's not the only explanation by a long shot. Was the guy even actually dead in the first place? <laughs> Did he have a twin? Is there something about the human body we don't understand? Like, what is going on? Well, we can't probe any of that in this case, because there's no sign the case even happened. And if there was, there's no body, no person to analyze. Any answer, including naturalistic ones, god-based ones, are all just going to be us making up post hoc explanations for things that happened in a story we don't even know is true. That's why I find this topic about whether Jesus was really resurrected or really existed or what it is disciples think about it or whatever, I find it incredibly tedious. That's why I rarely bothered to talk about it, because there's so little actual information that realistically speaking, it's pointless. It's a strange story where the details may or may not be massively fudged, if not outright fabricated, and that's it. There's nothing more to it. There's nothing more to it than there is to some sensational psychic story in a paranormal magazine. There's no more information than that. There's nothing more for us to learn. So you've got problems at every single step of the way. You think it's just as simple as, if Jesus rose from the dead, that means God exists, and Jesus rose from the dead, so therefore God exists. But no, there are valid questions to be asked about every single point of the story. What distinguishes you from for me is that I ask them and you refuse to. Now, if you're going to deny the facts of Christ, if you're going to deny the facts of what these disciples went through and died for, for what they had witnessed, and if you're going to deny the impact that Jesus made on this world, that's silly. What did these disciples witness? How can I actually know that? You have no idea how many stories are still created today of people who saw some amazing supernatural thing. First-hand accounts, second-hand accounts, 18th-hand accounts. Why should I not believe all of those, and then I should believe your thing? Why? Because you say I'm silly if I'm not that gullible? They're strange supernatural tales of 2,000 years ago. Woo -woo -woo. Yeah, and? I've seen strange supernatural tales from all through history. That doesn't make it believable just because someone says, Yeah, 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 but this one, though. This one. It's really important that you believe this one. Now, as far as the impact Jesus made on the world, I certainly recognize the impact the religion around this figure made on the world. To deny Christianity the religion would be silly, I agree. Who's doing that? I think we all recognize that there are Christians, and there's a lot of them, and it's been an influential religion. I get it. So is Islam. That doesn't make it true. Now, on this thing of the disciples dying for their beliefs, there's, of course, one big question mark on all of this, which is, did they, though? Doesn't prove anybody came back from the dead, doesn't prove God exists, doesn't prove any of the stuff you pretend it proves, but still, it's a valid question. Did it actually happen? Why do you think it did? Did these disciples actually witness firsthand the resurrected Jesus and then get led in front of some authority and told, this thing you're saying that you witnessed Jesus resurrected, and they said, no, I am firmly convinced, I shall not recant, and then they were killed for it. Well, first thing, let's ask if they saw Jesus resurrected. Do we have their accounts of this, or do we just have stories written by other people about it? We must have some sort of first-hand account where the apostles said, yes, I saw Jesus resurrected, and that's why I believe the thing. But no. No, you don't. The only person who claims to have seen Jesus after his death is Paul, in a vision. And every other story about these people seeing resurrected Jesus are stories other people wrote about people seeing Jesus. They're fanfic. So we don't have any of the disciples saying they saw a resurrected Jesus, and we also don't have some sort of a record of them being brought forth and demanded to recant and refusing to recant and then being killed for it. So if we don't even have that, if I can't even establish the sincere religious conviction of these disciples in the resurrection of Jesus, and moreover, if you can't, why am I going to go further with you and believe that in fact Jesus was resurrected, it wasn't just a belief on the part of these men, that that means Jesus was God, and therefore 
therefore, all the stuff about souls and heavens and the Bible and all that is also true. There's not one claim at play here. There's many, many, many different things that you have to establish to get to the point you want to get to, and you're pretending like it's a one-step process. Just believe, based on no evidence, that the disciples were all martyred for their belief after they most definitely saw the risen Jesus, and then, I don't know, shrug your shoulders and say, therefore, everything else is true too, because, yeah, why not? That's the argument you're actually making. That's the level you're operating on. Some myths passed around between Christians that don't even line up with the Christian's own documents, and a shrug. That is extremely silly. Yes, extremely. Maybe you should give it a bit of thought. Question, why do people use Jesus' name in vain, but they never use Hitler's name? Or they never use anybody else's name, but they use, they use Jesus' name? Language and culture? I mean, we just said Christianity's influential, right? We just covered that, didn't we? You surely realize that the statements, I don't think the religion is true, and I don't think the religion is influential, are not the same statement. Please tell me you can at least manage that. They say Jesus Christ. Why? The Bible testifies of this. If you're going to say that the Bible, uh, you know, is a lie, then why did the Bible get it right on this part? That God's name is blasphemed among, among the Gentiles. Because Paul thought God's name was blasphemed among the Gentiles. What do you think? That's why he used the present tense. The Bible says that. In the book of Romans, you can read that. Yeah, so your question is, why would Paul be annoyed at that time that people were blaspheming God? Is the question. In what way does this have relevance to anything you just said? That people suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Jesus says, the world hates me because I testify of its deeds. Okay, sounds like the kind of thing a religious leader would say, especially if he's saying something the government doesn't like, or something that's not quite the religion people are used to. People still say that kind of stuff to this day. The motivation's pretty obvious. Does this honestly confuse you? The world hates Jesus so much that they use his name as a cuss word. No, when that started, people were actually praying to Jesus. And that became so common it fell into regular use. And now you get annoyed because you think it's taking his name in vain. You should be happy about it. It helps to keep the guy relevant, but I guess whatever. Please explain that to me. I did, very basically. I don't think I should have to go beyond that. Frankly, the fact that you feel the need to have it explained to you at all says an awful lot about you. This is not exactly complicated stuff. Why is Jesus' name used as a cuss word? If he really didn't make an impact, then his name shouldn't be used as a cuss word. D Wait a second, do you think that all these things are the same? Do you think, like, Jesus making an impact, the founder of a major religion having impact on society and language, like Jesus or Muhammad, or the Buddha, or whoever, that is indistinguishable, unentangleable, from the religion being true? Or what? Is that what you think? I think that's what you think. If not, why are you mentioning it like it's significant here? Like it's somehow relevant to any conversation between a Christian and an atheist? We know Christianity exists. We know that it's been wildly influential in the European world and beyond. We also know why, and it has a lot to do with a lot of different people, not so much Jesus. But it has a lot to do with the Jesus idea, for sure. Do you believe that that's in dispute? Somehow. That even the most basic, high-level, preschool overview of the history of the last 2,000 years is somehow in dispute. Tell me you're joking. But Jesus made the biggest impact in this world. Christianity didn't stem from lies. Christianity st stemmed from eyewitnesses who were willing to die for what they claimed to have seen. They didn't claim to have seen it. Or if they did, it didn't survive. Because other than Paul's vision, we have nobody claiming they saw it. Nobody. Just stories about the stories. If Christianity is so based on truth and doesn't stem from lies, why do you have to start with this lie to convince me of it? Over 500 eyewitnesses witnessed the risen Christ. Did they? Who? Where can I read their accounts? Oh right, there are none, because this is just a tall tale from Paul who goes, uh, yeah, like 500 people saw Jesus. Yep, totally happened, uh, yeah. Anyway, moving on. That's it. <laughs> That's literally it. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 6. And this is what you base your life on? How have you fallen for this? Did you even look into it? If so, how do you still believe it? All the evidence you're bringing up, everything you're citing, is a reason not to believe in Christianity, not a reason to believe it. It shows that it's a belief built on nothing but hot air. Paul, who was once a killer of Christians, murdered Christians, became a murdered Christian after he seen the risen Christ. Supposedly. What we actually know is that he converted to Christianity and he was a strong believer in it. Strong proponent of it. Just like any number of people in any number of religions, any number of cults, any number of paranormal communities, any number of UFO people, or ghost people, or psychic people, or whatever. There are true believers in all kinds of crap. 
I'm aware. That doesn't make it true. You're a true believer too. There's plenty of Christians on YouTube right now who claim to have seen the risen Christ, who claim to have literally sat down on the couch with a physical Jesus and talked to him. And the key word there is claim, because for every person who claims that, there's some other person claiming some other nutty thing that has nothing to do with Christianity. This isn't evidence. This is meaningless drivel. You can't deny these things. Yes, I can. And if I'm not going to be taken in by every Looney Tunes story, every random person tells me about every random religion, every random belief in the world, I have to. Or within a year I'll be a writhing mess of contradictions believing every ridiculous story anyone ever says. Even the ones that all contradict each other. Nothing good comes of allowing yourself to believe things this out there on evidence this bad. You guys... Just don't take the time to look into these facts. Yes, I do. That's the point. I've heard all this crap before. I've looked into all of it before. That's why I know the answers. Because I actually looked into it. I didn't just hear it at church. I didn't just hear it from my mom. Where did you hear it? Did you look into it? No, you didn't. You did not. You can't have, at least not with any effort, or you would have rejected it the same way I have. Because it's as compelling and meaningful as a wet fart. <laughs> Did you know that you can reconstruct the whole New Testament without reading the whole the New Testament? You can re reconstruct the new the New Testament based off of non-Christian and outside biblical sources. Yeah, you could probably reconstruct a fair bit of it just from my videos. Yeah, I get it. People recount stories that are going around in their society. They quote from books. They write about ideas people have. I know. And if somebody writes down somebody else's story, that doesn't make that somebody else's story true. Otherwise, you'll be believing any secondhand story or thirdhand story or whatever that anybody tells you. If that's your standard of truth. I could tell you anyone did anything and you would have to believe me. Because otherwise it's very silly. This is how rumors are spread. This is how myths are started. This is how tall tales originate. This is where Bigfoot comes from and butthole probing aliens. This is not how you find the truth, and you'll find that out if you actually apply this standard consistently. Try it. Take a year. Try it. Actually approach every question the same way you approach this one. <laughs> and see how you end up. It won't be pretty. But why do you care? You're just a clump of cells. Oh, shut up. And, uh, Connor, we don't have 500 eyewitness accounts. You can't say that. Because you would have to provide evidence to prove that what the Bible says is false. To prove what the Bible says is a lie. No, what the Bible says is the supposed evidence that it's true. The evidence is really poor. That's enough. Whether it's true, whether it's false, who knows? There's no evidence that it's true, so I don't believe it. That's all we can do. There's nothing beyond that. That's how evidence works. It's either compelling or it's not. And it's not. End of story. Let me put it to you this way. Uh, yesterday, Cthulhu came back. You know, the guy with the wings and the tentacle face and the whole bit. And he dressed himself up in a tweed jacket and glasses, and he visited a Paris cafe. Uh, it was quite hard for him to fit, but he sat down at a table with his MacBook and uh, coffee, and uh, he wrote a story about a dog. And the interesting thing about this dog was it was brown. And then he turned into a tiny bird and flew away. Now, I know that you might have some questions, but listen. 10,000 people gathered on the street to watch this event. Okay, some of them are still alive, some of them have died since, uh, but they saw it, okay? So, you can't prove it's wrong, so now you, of course, have to believe my story, unless you're very silly. Because, you know, that's how evidence works. Oh, but what's that? I just made that story up right now, it's not in an old book? Okay, I'm gonna write it down, and I'm gonna put it in the Library of Congress. And I'm gonna include in there, hey, people of 2,000 years from now, this is a very old book. So now you have to believe me, or you're being very silly. You don't think it works this way. This is not how you operate in your daily life, and you know it. So if it doesn't work for my story, or any other story using the same standard of evidence, why do you turn your brain off and let it work for this? You don't have the capacity to do that. You can't say that unless you have evidence for that. Okay, evidence for not having 500 eyewitnesses. Okay, here's the evidence. We don't have 500 eyewitnesses. We have one line from Paul that claims there are 500 eyewitnesses. We don't have them. We don't have any accounts from any of them. None. Zero. If you disagree, bring it forth. But it's not there. You're not going to be able to. We don't have them. Maybe they existed. I kind of doubt it, but maybe. And maybe not. Either way, we don't have them. We don't. So they're not evidence. Evidence you don't have is not 
evidence. How can I explain this to you any more clearly? This is so simple that if I'd explained this to my daughter when she was four, she would have understood it. And I'm not exaggerating, she actually would have understood this. Because this stuff is baby tier, and you're not even there yet. Except that you are. You're there for every other question. You understand what I'm saying to you with regard to every other thing you ever look at. Except Christianity. Except the Bible. Everything else in the world, you get it. Just not this. How? How do you accept this nonsense? This absolute, total, obvious nonsense? Do you not care at all? Whether it's true at all, the most important fundamental belief in your life and you don't even care if it's true. That's not even a concern that enters your mind on this topic. As long as it makes you think you're going to heaven, as long as it makes you feel like you have value, as long as it makes you feel like life has a purpose, you're good. You're good. Truth? Eh. Oh. Billions of people. Billions of people do this every day. Billions. With a B. Billions. The Bible says in the book of Acts that there were over 500 eyewitnesses who seen the risen Christ. Shut up. Just shut up. And these men were willing to die for that. Oh, really? Who among them died for it? Which ones of the unnamed 500 people mentioned in one line of some guy's letter? You tell me which one of those anonymous people asserted on pain of death that they'd saw the risen Jesus and died for it. <laughs> You're driving me crazy here, man. You keep repeating yourself about this for a while now, so let's just skip ahead a bit. But ultimately, for you to think that you are nothing more than a human being at all? This is in the middle of a long time of you yet again repeating all the things you said throughout the whole video, but listen to what you just said. For you to think you're nothing more than a human being? I am a human being. Why should I be more than a human being? What's wrong with being a human being? Why do you want me to think poorly of this? You don't see how this makes people think poorly of your worldview? Whatever though, keep going. Logic, you know, if he wants to debate me or discuss with me, um, instead of making a little reaction video on me, yeah, little. why don't you contact me directly? No, well, you devalue yourself, you have a worldview that makes you uh, worthless filth that deserves to burn in hell, so until you can demonstrate to me that you have some value for yourself, that you have some respect for human beings, that you have respect for yourself being a clump of cells, um, no, you're just scum on the bottom of my shoe and I'm gonna treat you like crap, I guess. Just follow in your lead, pal. You get what you give. And we can set something up on my channel. No. If you'd just taken what I said in my video and disagreed, I would be open to a conversation with you. I actually think it'd be kind of fun, but the point is you didn't earn it. You don't deserve it. I mean, you've already said you're just going to act like an asshole through the whole thing intentionally, so it's clearly not going to be a conversation of any value whatsoever. It's much better that I do it in this format, the same format you did, in fact. The format of a video. At least then you can't do whatever you're planning to do through the video, throwing out profanities and slurs, screaming and insulting and so on and so on. I don't really know what your plan is, but you say you're going to do the best to be the biggest dickhead you can be to treat me with the least value possible, so I'm not going to assume anything especially good. So, no. Refuse. On the basis of your behavior. So I'm calling you out, Logic. Oh dear. Okay? Instead of you running around making videos about everybody, how about you contact me directly on my Instagram, Christ Righteous Ministries, and let's discuss. You say that as if you're a person that I'm gonna respect enough to do that. Generally, the people I have live conversations with are people I like. You know? Abu Bakr Siddiq, uh, Theophilus McPherson, Fernandez, whatever his name is now. I'd have one with Gina Maria, too. I like her attitude. And that guy in the car with the beard and the pencil. That guy? I like him. He's a, he's a dick as well, but, like, not in a bad way. But your stated intention is to treat me as poorly as possible. And you've done everything possible through this video to diminish any baseline amount of respect anyone might have had for you. This is a disaster. So your preferences, your call-outs, whatever, they don't matter. They might have mattered, but because of the way you act, now they don't. Welcome to human society, where God doesn't have a damn thing to do with the interaction between me and you. Your actions establish the reaction. If you want to do this live, we can do this live. If you want to do this personal, we can do this personal. But that's not getting my attention. Making a video about me doesn't get my attention. You just made a 40 minute response to me, like the day after I posted mine. You don't gotta play the tough guy. I got your attention, it's pretty obvious. You got mine too, we're all exchanging attention all over the place here. It's cool. You don't gotta lie about it. If you guys want everlasting, if you love your family, your mom, your brother, your dad, your cousins, your, your children, you would want them to have life as well. 
you wouldn't look at them like worm food. People who just live one day and die the next day become worm food. If I loved my family, I'd make up some fantasy so that I didn't believe they were actual living organisms that die when they die. I'd pretend it wasn't true because fat lot of good that does. Oh, mom died? Ah, well, I'll see her in heaven. It's not so much different from saying I'll see her at Christmas. Love. You guys prove that the Bible is word for word true because you're acting the way that the uh, that the bible itself is describing hard-hearted people sinners rebe uh, rebellious people uh yeah insults insults fling some insults that doesn't make the stories true one the bible insults a bunch of people two i'm saying you're like the people it insults three therefore the bible is true <laughs> wow i'm convinced people who reject God. I mean, the Bible is very descriptive on these people and you guys are acting just like them. Yeah, the Bible's like, I don't like these people. I think you're mean. They say I'm wrong. Oh, how perceptive. It's a prophecy. It's a miracle. <laughs> that people who believe nonsense built on nothing get a little bit offended when people mention it. That's gotta be a new phenomenon. That's, that's totally not unbelievably obvious. So the, the Bible is sharper than any two-edged sword. That's your standard for a sharp and witty, insightful comment, is it? Uh, figures. So that's an unreasonable atheist, somebody who has fed into the lies so much, who doesn't want truth at all. Even when truth is presented to them, they don't want it. They like what they're doing. They like how they feel. They like their atheism because they don't feel morally accountable for anything. They like they like what they what they believe. I fast forwarded through a bunch of preaching and advertising for his book and all kinds of garbage, but I figured this part should stay in because it's just another element of the dishonesty, right? Like all the things that he has to say about what's in your head, here's some more. You don't want to know what's true. You don't want to be morally accountable. Just sling shit, sling shit all day. That's all the religions equipped him with. Just making stuff up, pretending you believe it, and then going, well, I guess that's everything I need to know about you. What an absolute train wreck this is. Glad we're close to the end. A reasonable atheist will accept the truth. Okay, done. Now what? Oh, right, you mean your story, right? right. Yeah, a reasonable atheist will just stop being an atheist as soon as you say so. Mm-hmm. Anyway, there's nothing else worth talking about in the rest of the video, so I guess that's it. Just a quick little response, nothing much, you know. Now, I don't know, this one, something about this one. I just watched the first 10 or 15 minutes before I started, something like that. And even though it meant I kind of had to burn the candle at both ends to get it done within my scheduled time frame, um, this reply is just so deranged in so many ways that for me it was just something I really wanted to talk about right away. It was just so utterly nuts. And now I have, and it was fun, if a little bit tiring. Finally at the end, thank you for watching. Seriously, if you're here, thanks for watching all the way through. That's impressive. Before you go, please give the video a like and click subscribe if you haven't. And if you really like the channel, please do consider supporting on Patreon or Subscribestar or any platform. Even with just a couple bucks, it really helps a lot. Massive thanks to everyone who already does support the channel. If you want early access, sign up to the email list at list.logic.com. And I'll see you next time.